Uh, hello everyone, myself Ritesh Pant and I am currently working as a PhD student in Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research Bhopal in India and uh, the topic of my research is and that I will discuss in the talk is excitation transport in molecular aggregates with thermal motion. So let's start with the motivation behind the work. And what you see on your screen is a light harvesting complex where these green color, yellow color, and red color sticks, these are the molecules. And these big molecules are placed inside this cage of protein that is shown here by this blue color and gray color. Right. So this as a whole is uh, aggregate. Now let's say we uh, one sign uh, sunlight on this molecular aggregate. So that sunlight is then absorbed by a molecule and that transfer the molecules uh, molecule from the electronic ground state to electronic excited state. This we call excitation or excitant sometimes. This excitation energy then jumps from one molecule to next molecule unless it ultimately reaches reaction center. And after this, uh, some charge separation will take place. And that could be the nicer way to store the energy. This is how plants harvest sunlight. The idea here is to use these molecular aggregates for artificial light harvesting, uh, right? What we will do there is that we use these molecular aggregates to absorb the sunlight as they are doing in case of plants and to harvest, to funnel that sunlight to semiconductor so that we can convert this solar energy into the chemical energy. And this idea has been widely used to make this disensitized solar cell. Here, uh, we use these molecular aggregates for light absorption and the transfer to the semiconductor. But there is a catch. And the problem here is that, as you see in this movie, this is the simulation of the thermal vibration of molecule, FMO molecule, uh, inside this case of protein. So these gray color, these blue color, these sticks are the molecule, and this yellow color, these are the strips of the protein. And you see here is that these vibrations are present in molecular aggregate. And now there is the strong coupling of the, that excitation energy with these vibrations uh, these, uh, this, uh, the backbone protein that you see here, as well as the solvent where the molecules are placed. And this strong coupling with this environment causes the localization of excitation on a finite number of molecules, the phenomena that we call excitant trapping here. So what excitant trapping will do is that it will ultimately localize the excitation energy to a finite number of molecules. It's like we excited a molecule. We wanted that excitation to reach to a certain number of uh, molecules, but it is not going there because of the, uh, this strong coupling with the environment. And what this excitant trapping will do is that it will reduce the efficiency of excitation transport and that will ultimately reduce the efficiency of disensitized solar, solar cells that we are trying to make. So this is the big problem there, uh, this excitant trapping. In this direction, uh, we are, what we are trying to study is that how to handle the problem of excitation and localization. For that, we study the effect of motion of molecule on excitation transport. So as you see, here in this movie, uh, each blue color disc is a molecule and these red color arrows are the direction of the transition dipole moment here. You see that motion of molecule along the aggregation axis. We study how this motion of molecule is different from the static scenario or is this motion of molecule, uh, can this motion of molecule help us uh, in, uh, the improving or uh, in uh, in handling that uh, excitant trapping problem. Okay, so this I will discuss in my talk. But before that, I will briefly introduce what are the molecular aggregates. For that, uh, you see that uh, these uh, this uh, structure, this model structure of molecular of a molecular aggregate, where each green color disc attached to these blue color uh, disc. This, this forms a big molecule, a supramolecule. And these molecules are stacked together by uh, some kind of hydrogen bond or a pi pi stick. The Hamiltonian for this system is given by this form. Here, En 
are the site and SD disorder. So as you see here uh, for a system of five mon uh, molecules, so I show you five site and enzymes, and they are not in resonance. They are off resonance because of the environment present. So this is this could be as uh, I discussed. This could be a uh, some solvent, or this could be the protein environment. And the distribution of these energy levels, we take Gaussian, right? Where in this distribution, E n is, are the site energy, E zero is the equilibrium energy, and sigma e is the standard deviation of the distribution. To treat the dynamics or to study the dynamics. We define a basis that is called diabetic basis here, in uh, where n means nth monomer is an excited state or nth molecule is an excited state, and all other are in ground state. So this is a single excited. And the second term in this Hamiltonian is uh, the intermolecular Coulomb interaction. So it includes all types of the interaction between two different molecules. That could be the electron, electron, nuclear, nu the electron, nucleons, and all the interaction. That interaction will we take in a simple form because it will have a complicated form. But uh, uh, like under some approximations where uh, the distance between molecules is much larger, we can uh, take a molecule as a point diaphragm. And for that, to the lowest order approximation, this Vmn can be taken as a dipole-dipole interaction. So in this dipole-dipole interaction, mu m are the transition dipole moments for monomer m and n. X m n is the distance between these two monomers. Any two monomers. Okay. So now uh, we study two types of motion. The first one is torsional motion. In this, you see that these molecules are their position is fixed along the aggregation axis, but now they can rotate. Uh, they can rotate around the axis joining them. So this type of motion is called torsional motion, and the potential that bounds these molecule is uh, modeled by this form. Here, v zero is the the strength of potential. K theta is the periodicity of the potential. Theta zero is the equilibrium angle here, and theta m is the angular separation. So you see that uh, uh, this potential is fourfold symmetric. So that is model so that uh, to model the actual structure of a molecule, and sigma theta and sigma omega. So that the angular distribution of position, uh, angular position, the distribution of angular position and the angular velocity. Uh, given by using Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, so it has a dependence on temperature and the periodicity. And you see that our potential V M and B uh, depends on sigma theta. So if you change the sigma theta, we change the width of the potential. So that will ultimately change the amplitude of angular motion. So, so this uh, we can use as, uh, for our study later. And uh, the dipole-dipole interaction now will have this form. Uh, there is uh, so you see x zero is the equilibrium separation between the monomers that is fixed now mu is the transition dipole moment that is taken same for all the molecules and uh, theta m n is the angular separation. Second type of motion that we take is the longitudinal motion where the direction of transition dipole moment now is fixed but molecule now can. Uh, can move along the aggregation axis. So as you as you see in this in this movie, to model the the dynamics of molecular motion, we use Morse potential here, uh, which is shown in this figure, where dE is the the depth of potential, alpha controls the width of well in this case, and x zero is the equilibrium angle. Now time dependent parameter is x m n. So this will uh, change with time because now angular separation is fixed, but molecule can move along the aggregation axis. So the distribution of position along the aggregation axis is given by sigma x, which is square root of kVt upon ke, and the distribution of velocity is given by again we use Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution for these distributions. And the dipole-dipole interaction will have this form now. There is no angular dependence. Theta m n is zero right now, but x m n will change with time and mu again is the transition dipole moment of a moment and these transition dipole moments are modeled by this red color arrow now to study the dynamics sorry to study the dynamics 
uh, of excitation transport as well as the motion of molecule we use this quantum classical tellet surface hopping algorithm where the motion of molecule that you see here the motion of these blue color disc is modeled by using uh, it calculated by using newton's equation of motion however the transport of excitation from one molecule to the next molecule for that we use schrodinger equation and after doing all this this method is quantum classical method and after doing all this we finally calculate efficiency of excitation transport in uh, for our system so that is defined as the probability for the excitation to reach to the output side the maximum probability for example in this uh, in this figure in this uh, you if if we excite this molecule let's say then excitation is jumping from this molecule and moving to this molecule so this one is our output side. so efficiency will be the maximum uh, excitation probability that is reaching to this molecule once we have excited this molecule initially at t equal to 0 and after calculating uh, this efficiency since we wanted to compare the efficiency for motion and uh, compare wanted to know how the motion is helping us so we compare it with the static scenario and for that we calculate relative efficiency and for this i will show here some some of my results that uh, we uh, that i obtained for some parameters for example for torsional motion in this figure sigma e y in y axis is the localization strength right that is the distribution of energy and larger sigma e means uh, localization is more trapping is more and sigma theta is the angular distribution that means and as i have shown in last slide is that if i increase sigma theta means i am increasing the width of my Event, right and this color boxes is the relative efficiency so you see that the relative efficiency everywhere all the time uh, is not all the time but everywhere is greater than one that means the the efficiency when the molecules are moving is larger than the efficiency when the molecules are static so that means thermal motion helps us in improving the transport efficiency right a similar observation we had for longitudinal motion where again in y axis i show you sigma e means localization strength and x axis is alpha means the width of mass potential and smaller value of alpha means broader potential large width of potential and again we see that the relative efficiency meter is 10 times larger in the, in the regime where uh, this sigma e means localization probability is maximum we see that the relative efficiency is 10 times larger that means the efficiency for the motion is 10 times larger than the efficiency when the molecules are static so these are just two results that i have taken from uh, my uh, my paper on this on this uh, excitation transport for more details you can have a look at this paper and i will discuss in my talk more uh, results there also for now thank you so much